Hello, I'm Leonard Maltin, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Disc 1 of The Chronological Donald, Volume 4. The very fact that we've come to a fourth double-disc set gives you an idea of just how popular and prolific Donald Duck was during the heyday of theatrical short subjects. In fact, even when Walt Disney had discontinued most of his other cartoon series for theatrical release, Donald held on. By the 1950s, it was costing more than ever to produce cartoon shorts with the quality Walt insisted on maintaining. But theater owners weren't willing to pay more to show them. So in 1952 and 53, Walt reluctantly shut down his Mickey Mouse, Goofy, and Pluto series. But he kept Donald going for a few more years as he integrated one-shot specials into his yearly release schedule. There were two main reasons for this. He needed projects to keep his staff busy between feature film assignments, and he always wanted to have a Disney short playing with Disney features. Yet, even when the belt was being tightened in the shorts department, Disney wouldn't do anything that wasn't first class. His distributor, RKO, still made up individual full-color posters for each new release, like the ones you see here. Theaters posted these in their lobby because they knew audiences would be happy to see that a new Donald Duck cartoon was playing on the program. And when the occasion demanded, Donald's director Jack Hanna and his story men would even commission an original song, as they did for the Halloween cartoon Trick or Treat. Having staff composers like Oliver Wallace, Paul Smith, and George Bruns at the studio was a luxury that paid off even in the shorts department. Dreaming up new ideas for the wise quacking duck was a challenge for director Jack Hanna and his team of gag writers and animators. They could always count on nephews Huey, Dewey, and Louie to create mischief, as they do in Trick or Treat, which also introduced a character named Witch Hazel, voiced by the great June Foray. This is the real thing, you know, right out of Shakespeare. Chip and Dale provided plenty of story and gag opportunities and co-starred in many of Donald's latter-day short subjects, including one that stands out in Disney history because it was made in 3D. In the early 1950s, Hollywood studios were trying everything they could think of to lure people away from their brand new TV sets and back to movie theaters. That's when Cinerama, Cinemascope, Stereophonic Sound, and other special processes came along. There was a clamor for 3D films in 1953, and virtually every animation studio tried it out at least once. I wish we could show you working for peanuts in that process, but even in 2D, you can see how some of the gags were staged for maximum effect. And if you listen to the commentary track I've done with animation historian Jerry Beck, we'll tell you more about it. Another animation buff and a talented animator and director in his own right Eric Goldberg is our special guest in a feature that brings to life a Donald Duck cartoon that was conceived and storyboarded, but never filmed. There were many unfinished projects like this, and now, thanks to Eric and the Disney Animation Research Library, where virtually every drawing from the past is archived, we'll all get to see what this particular cartoon might have been like. As you may know, Donald had a separate career away from the hurly-burly of animation, and that's the subject of a special feature on this disc you may be surprised to see just how versatile a character he turned out to be.